There is no hiding the tension that has charged each confrontation between Senator Rand Paul and the nation's leading public health expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci. And you keep coming back to personal attacks on me that have absolutely no relevance to reality. Do you think anybody has had more influence let, over let our response finish. to this than you have? Do you Madam think it's a great Chair, success? Do you think it's a great success what's happened right. so far? Do you think you, the lockdowns you said, are good for our kids? Do you think we slowed down the death rate? More people have died now under President Biden than did under President Trump. You are the one responsible. You are the architect. You are the lead architect for the response from the government. And now 800,000 people have died. Will we ever learn the origins of COVID-19, given the fact that the the communist government of the People's Republic of China will not let American scientists or scientists from the international community in to conduct an investigation. You know, short of the Chinese admitting that it happened, that they have the virus that started, you know, and that they were growing it in a lab, short of that happening, we'll not know with 100% certainty, but we can know with a great deal of certainty. And I started out believing the scientists and believing the government that this probably came from nature. But as I learned more and as I read more about it, I've come to the conclusion that I'm probably 90, 95 percent convinced that it came from a lab. One reason is this. They tested 80,000 animals uh, for COVID and they didn't find it in any animals at the wet market or otherwise. So they really didn't find an animal reservoir for this. The other thing they did is they looked at 9,000 samples of blood from people in China who had flu-like symptoms, enough to have blood drawn in 2019. And if this came gradually from nature, from animals over to humans, you would expect that there would be sort of a gradual increase and then maybe an exponential increase. But at first, there would be some people in 2019 that had it. But when they looked at the samples of 9,000 people's blood from 2019, none of them had COVID. And so statistically, it becomes less likely that this came from animals. We also see that when we look at the design of how the DNA or RNA is in the, in the virus, we find that uh, the design is very unusual in that it has a specific uh, site, they call the furin cleavage site, that the Chinese were proposing putting the site into one of these viruses experimentally in 2018. And then lo and behold, when it came out in 2020, it had that particular site in it that they had proposed to put in it experimentally. Mm -hmm. And so that's why many scientists immediately looked at the sequence and said, holy cow, this sequence shows you know, one of the one of the different things that makes it more infectious looks like it may have been inserted and not put in there by nature. But it will be a debate back and forth. And I can tell you, if the Republicans take over the Senate and I'm in charge of a committee, we will have an investigation, mainly not so much to assign blame, although that may be part of it, but to make sure that this doesn't happen again, that we're not doing this kind of crazy research, gain of function research, where we create viruses that are so dangerous and deadly and that don't exist in nature, I think that's a foolish, uh, a fool's errand. On the subject of assigning blame, you have on many occasions either called for uh, Anthony Fauci to resign or to be fired. What is it ultimately that you want to see happen to Anthony Fauci? I want him to be gone from public policy because what he has done to obscure or cover up the origins of the virus is reprehensible also in line to Congress about whether or not he was funding the gain-of-function uh, research in Wuhan is reprehensible. But also, virtually every mandate that he's advocated, such as wearing masks that don't work. So, for example, if you are at risk, a mask might help you. But a mask that is cloth, that has pores 650 times bigger than the virus, won't help at all. So his lying to us and saying, oh, wear a cloth mask or wear two cloth masks, when there's no scientific validity between wearing cloth masks, I think is really a disservice to the public. On his discounting of natural immunity that you acquire after you get the disease and saying it doesn't matter and we're not even going to look at that, that's completely different than what he said in 2004. It's now been put out there, a video of him saying, of course, if you've had the flu, you don't need a flu vaccine. This used to be common sense, but now we're being lied to him because he thinks we're not smart enough to make our own decisions. And so I think virtually everything he's done has either been a lie or been a miscalculation or been uh, flat out just authoritarian. So, yes, the sooner we can separate him from government, the better. If it was a lie, if it's in authoritarianism, as you suggest here, what, what could possibly be the motivation for conducting himself that way? 
You know, there's two uh, viewpoints on this. One, you could say that for some reason he might have a financial gain by doing this. I don't know that that's true. I think it's more likely that he is what we call a, a you know, follower of Plato, believes in the idea of a, uh, a noble lie, the idea that he's going to lie to the public and he knows he's lying, but because he thinks the public is too stupid to do the right thing. And so he believes that he knows best what to do for the collective. It's sort of the epitome of elitism that elitists believe that the common man can't make their own decisions wisely. And so even if you have to lie to them to get them to do something. So for example, I think he knows and he would personally admit that if you've had COVID, you have immunity to it and you probably don't need to be vaccinated. He won't say that though, because he thinks there might be some people not get vac vaccinated that should or haven't had the disease. So he'd rather just everybody take it. He would probably admit that there are some dangers for teenage males in taking the vaccine, but he'd probably say, eh, we're gonna lose a few healthy teenagers, but overall for the collective, it's still better just to inoculate everybody. You're, you're, talking, about myo, 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 you're talking about myocarditis in, in terms of uh, heart inflammation for uh, many young men. Is that understated? Is it happening to a greater degree than the American public is aware? I would say it's not extremely common, but I would say if you look at your healthy 15-year-old boy and you say, should he be vaccinated or not, there's a 60% chance your 15-year-old boy's already had COVID. So that means he's already immune. But also, even if your child hasn't had COVID, the death rate's about one in a million. So any risk factors from the vaccine have to be less than one in a million. And I would say the risk of myocarditis is higher than that. I would also say that when we've done it head to head, we've measured the inflammation of the heart you might get from COVID versus the inflammation of heart you can get from the vaccine. It's 10 to 20 times greater from the vaccine. So without question, I think it's malpractice to be forcing vaccines on teenage boys, but in all likelihood, measuring risk versus benefit, the risks of the vaccine, even if they are still rare, are much greater than the extraordinarily rare risk of the disease harming you. And so unless you have a peculiar medical problem for your child, if your child is young and healthy, I think the risks of the vaccine outweigh the risk of the disease.